Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Upon the launch of Hornby's new steampunk range, every single product within that range sold out overnight, and traditional model railways were completely forgotten as people in their thousands flocked to build new steampunk layouts. Today we take a look back at some of the legendary products in this range that revolutionised model railways forever. Clearly then, that video intro of mine was a complete lie. Hornby's steampunk range has been with us for almost three years now, and far from selling out overnight, the vast majority of the range is still in stock to this day, and last month they even slashed most of these prices in half to try and shift the stuff, and yet it is still in stock. And I haven't seen thousands of steampunk layouts crop up, in fact I can't remember seeing a single one. The only steampunk layout I've ever seen was the Laurie Calvert layout, which was the original steampunk layout, and in fact it was Laurie that designed most of the Hornby steampunk range. Now, I don't want to say nasty things about Laurie's designs and such, because I actually think they're pretty good. The locos and the wagons and rolling stock, they are very, very interesting and unique. With the steampunk range, I don't think it is the design that's the problem, but more the concept. I think the products are conceptually bad rather than physically bad, and this is really a trend that we are seeing quite a lot from Hornby. Obviously, the company are in quite a bit of financial trouble, and we are seeing them desperately trying anything and everything to try and turn their fortunes around, and this has led to a lot of frankly bizarre products and ranges, which have arrived with great fanfare and then quietly faded away as nobody was really interested. I suppose the most recent example of that would be Hornby's TT range. The products themselves are absolutely fine, I really like the products, I think they are great, but conceptually is TT something that people want? Not entirely sure, it's hard to say how sales are going at the moment, and the range certainly hasn't faded away, we're not at that point yet, but will it turn out well? I'm not too sure. Anyway, what made Laurie Calvert's steampunk layout awesome was the fact that it was completely different from the rest. It was unique and nobody else had anything like it. The moment you produce this stuff commercially on a mass production basis, that ceases to be the case. If these locos and things are made in their hundreds or even thousands, they're just not unique anymore. But I, of course, am a model railway enthusiast, and when this range was launched, a lot of people said, this range is not for you, it is for the steampunk community. You have no idea about the steampunk community. So, ooh, okay, back off. So where are they? Where are the steampunk community? Have the steampunk community adopted this range en masse? Not sure. Like I say, the other month, a lot of the prices here were slashed in half, and yet it doesn't seem as though the steampunk community bought all of this stuff. Now, I'm not an expert on steampunk, but to me, the whole point of steampunk is the creative side. It is making this stuff. It is creating something that is unique. By simply buying these products, you're skipping the best part. Why would you want to miss out on creating something like this? And then you've just got an object that you own that you didn't create. And what are you going to do with it? Play with it as an adult? run it round the track a few times, that's going to get boring quite quickly, isn't it? Well, to that, maybe you would say that the Hornby Steampunk range is intended to be just a starting point. Maybe these things are supposed to just get you started in being creative in building a steampunk layout. But that sounds great, but to me it doesn't make any sense. Again, the best bit of creating a layout, for me at least, would be devising the locomotive and rolling stock. By just buying this stuff off the shelf, again, you're skipping that best part. For me, a good starting point would be Laurie's original layout. I would see that, and then if I felt like I wanted to create something similar, that would be my starting point, and I would start from scratch. I don't see the purpose of the Hornby Steampunk range. Anyway, when Hornby launched their steampunk locomotives, they started out at £39.99. And what do you do when a product isn't selling that well? Well, of course, you increase the price, don't you? Isn't that how it works? Well, yeah, now they're £43.99, because that makes a lot of sense. And sure enough, yes, the entire range is still in stock. 
But like I say, last month or you know, a few weeks ago, whatever, I noticed that Hornby were trying to clear the range and they cut the prices in half. And in that little sale, I managed to pick up basically these two steampunk locomotives for the price of one. These cost £22 each. I might be the only person that did because they're now back up to full price and still in stock. But today we're going to be taking a look at these. We'll see what they're like. Again, they are at least interesting, if not great sellers. And I do find the range quite amusing, I must say. The fact that Hornby thought that people would pay almost £50 at this point, £43.99, for something like this. It's quite funny, isn't it, really? So let's take a look at the Hornby Steampunk Locos. So here we have it, the good old Hornby steampunk packaging, which is deliciously ironic because if you know anything at all about the steampunk community, their pet hate is when a company comes along and tries to commercialize the steampunk aesthetic by just taking random everyday objects, sticking gears all over them, and then trying to sell them to the steampunk community as some sort of steampunk merchandise. And that is exactly what Hornby tried to do with this range. It's unbelievable, but they did. Yes, with the packaging, but also with the various scenery and buildings. Yeah, look at this stuff. These are just standard Hornby buildings, which have literally had gears and other gubbins stuck all over them. It's frankly hilarious that Hornby thought that this would work. Like I say, I don't know anything much about steampunk, but when Hornby launched this range, I did a little bit of research and I found all this stuff. I found Reginald's song about sticking gears on stuff and calling it steampunk. This is a well-known thing. How did Hornby not know that this would not go down well? I don't know, but uh, yeah, the buildings are absolutely hilarious. I want to buy some, but I also don't want to waste space and money. So we'll stick with the Locos because uh, these are slightly less terrible and um, a little bit more interesting because you can actually run them. So what is this thing then? Well, the label won't really help you to understand because this is BL Big Loss 2002 Fearless Boston Grays Hatters engine. And if I show you the back of the box, which is printed upside down, you can see some of the other horrors in this range. The first one is Leander, I guess, which is the one I looked at a few years ago. And then the other two locos we're looking at today and some of the other rolling stock is probably best forgotten. So let's have, I've forgotten what it's called already, Fearless. All right, well, let's open it up and let's have a look. Now, like I say, these are interesting because they're resin. Yeah, they are the standard Hornby 040, which are cheap as anything, by the way. But instead of the standard 040 body, they've got a resin cast of a Hornby 040 body, which Laurie took and sort of added bits to and chopped and changed and made a new body. So they're not injection molded plastic and then they're sort of painted up. So they are resin and they weigh a ton. Anyway, here's a bit on the Boston Grays Hatters engine. Okay. Designed with speed in mind over pulling power, that's because it's a cheap Hornby 040, the sleek curves and classic fittings were the brainchild of Boston Gray himself. He said the idea came to him during the revelries of a particularly fun party. It was the chic engine to have, and if Boston had one, his chums would have one too. Of course, all subtly augmented and painted to the desires of their owner. Okay, lack of punctuation and long-running sentences made that particularly awkward to read. Anyway, I'm not going to really show you the um, instructions, except it says Steampunk 040 Locomotives HP Motor. Let's open this up, have a little look. Okay, nothing unique about this, it's just the standard Hornby 040 instructions, although I will check this later on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when I tried to remove the body of my existing Steampunk Loco, I had to sort of destroy the glue that was holding it on or whatever. So um, yeah, interesting. Right, so no accessories, weighs a ton. I will compare the weight of this to a standard Hornby 040 in a bit. But here it is, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's an impressive thing I have to say and the photo on the front of the box looks absolutely nothing like it. I mean, look at the difference. Yeah, the colors are completely different, aren't they? A lot more silver on the actual thing and the photo of course doesn't show the top of the model which is uh, insanely complex actually but it's all a single molded piece molded in resin like i say now do i like this very much uh, no not really i'm more of a lover of 
elegant traditional steam locos um, but you know if you're a steampunk enthusiast maybe you would like the look of this although it's quite clear that the bottom half is just a very typical straight laced standard non-steampunk chassis and then there's a clear divide between that and the body which is obviously absolutely insane completely different color completely different style just doesn't look very unified, does it? But, you know, for £22, it's all right. I wouldn't be paying more than 40 for something like this, though. That's just a bit silly. And they can keep them in stock for eternity, for all I care. Anyway, there's another one. <laughs> look at this thing. So I suppose this is supposed to be a diesel. Go figure. Steampunk. Let's make a diesel. It's about as well thought out as the rest. But let me show you the label. So what name's this got? Rogue. I guess it is a rogue if it's a diesel, isn't it? Lady Trimfema, Lovelace's diesel dame's engine. Okay, so they're not hiding the fact that it's a diesel then. Okay, well, let's open it up. Let's have a look at this. See if the model... Well, uh, i tell you what, let's have a look at the backstory because uh, <laughs> they're quite amusing. Right, so Lady Trophenia. Hang on, that's not what it said on the box. Okay, so the box says Lady... Trophema. The card says Lady Trophenia. So they've changed the name already. I mean, come on now. Really, is it that difficult to come up with a name and stick to it across all of the different labelling? I don't like to cry incompetence, but I can't think of a better word, unfortunately. Right, Lady Trophenia slash Trophena Lovelace's Diesel Dame's Engine. Designed by a committee as a slow-moving armoured vehicle to get troops and armaments to the front-line battle with the Martian invaders. The Diesel Dames brought stocks and invested in a few of their own, repurposing them to run on rails. As had always been suggested, they increased their speed without damaging their pulling power. The Rogue clearly is the brute, able to smash through barriers and still take a heavy load. Okay, well, no idea what that was about. Makes no sense at all. Okay, well, sorry I'm being really nasty about this, but it's just, um, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I should be more gracious about it, but it's just um, all a bit daft, isn't it? Whoa, but look at this. Again, this is such a big beast. It's absolutely massive. It's, oh, it's huge. Oh, wow. Okay, so here it is. Again, the photo on the box completely fails to put across what an absolute behemoth this thing is. It weighs a ton. It's insane looking. It's got some big jets on it. And um, around the back, what are these? Exhausts or something? It's quite a cool effect on it. Um, I mean, utterly horrible, in my opinion. It's not something I would want to run on my railway ordinarily. But a few years ago, I would never have imagined such a thing would exist. Never in a million years. So here they go. <laughs> At full price, I have around 90 pounds worth of locomotive in my hand here. Yeah, it's no surprise this stuff didn't sell. But uh, for sort of 44 pounds, um, it's a little bit better, isn't it? It doesn't seem too awful. We'll have a close look then. I will show you very quickly some of the details and then I'll get them running for you. So let's get started. Okay, so here they are all lined up. It looks like some horrifying evolution of steam locomotives or something. On the far end, we've got the traditional Hornby 040 on which most of these are based. And because it's just got the plastic body on it, this weighs in at 122 grams. The rest of the loco's bodies, like I say, are cast in resin, and so they're much heavier. This one, as I'm going to call it, because I can't be doing it with the names already, I can't even remember what any of them are, is 148 grams, so considerably heavier. This one that I had before, a couple of years ago, this one's even heavier at 169 grams. Nice. And then the one on the end, the great big diesel, is the heaviest of them all. A really massive chunk of resin on this thing, 178 grams, so over 50 grams heavier than the traditional Hornby tank engine. So there you go, that's the weight, very heavy resin models. So there it is up close and personal. Can't remember the name of this one, some nonsense about hats or something anyway. And uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, it is cool looking, isn't it? You cannot buy anything else quite like this in model railways. And for a few minutes, at least, I do find these quite interesting to look at. However, ultimately, I become quite bored of these things quite quickly. They're not very inspiring. 
And I think that's mainly because the entire range is just based on these basic cheap Hornby 040 chassis, which really shows me that Hornby's heart was not in this range. These are the cheapest chassis that Hornby produce and therefore they represent almost no risk, no development needed, nothing. I think if a different chassis had been used for at least one of them, like a Tender Loco or something like that, it would have been a lot more interesting, but also a lot more expensive and a lot more risky. And the fact that they are all just based on these 040s shows that Hornby were not willing to take a risk with this range and that they'd rather just take a shot at making a load of money on steampunk stuff without really investing in it properly, which uh, of course is not the smartest idea. So here's a closer look at the body. Yeah, it's just a single resin piece, no separate parts on this at all, and all painted the same color, except for the safety valves in this case, which have got this uh, gold paint on them. For some reason, all of the safety valves are sort of connected together weirdly, which isn't a great look. Interestingly, at the back of the cab, there is a separate piece glued onto the chassis here. I'm not exactly sure what that is or why you would want it there. Again, Steampunk's supposed to have a logic to it. I'm not really getting a logic from this thing. I can see the streamlining, yeah, you've got this sort of duck's beak at the front um, and a few pipes and such, but again, these pipes, for the most part, they're not really connected to anything, so I don't get it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, there's no logic to it. Let's move on, please, very, very quickly. Right, here's the big diesel thing, and you'll notice there's no variety in the paintwork. It's decorated in exactly the same way, just sort of painted black with a bit of silver slapped on. And it's been painted so haphazardly that there are even bristles from the paintbrush stuck to the model, which is quite funny. Um, yeah, I suppose we're supposed to believe that this is driven via these big jet engines. But again, there's no real logic to it, is there? The jet engines are right up at the top there, so you're gonna introduce like a, a rotation to the thing. In order for the Loco to drive forwards, you're gonna have hot air spewing out of the jet engines and going straight towards the cab, which has large glass windows on the front, so it wouldn't work, it would kill whoever drove it. And I'm not really sure what the rest of the Loco is for. Why has it got the sort of engine area underneath the jets? Is that a backup system? Why do the wheels need to be coupled together if it's jet powered? They could just do away with the rods and that would be something less to maintain. Yeah, I think the pedantic side of me and also the engineering side of me just rejects this for not making a lot of sense. There's a slight variation in the paint job around the back. I don't know what these two things are supposed to be, but they are painted into a copper color. And around the front, there's a, a blue thing. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a lamp or something? I've no idea. But yeah, it's a very big thing, quite eye-catching, and uh, you do kind of look twice at it, think, what on earth is that? But under closer inspection, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Right, let's get these down onto the track, see how they run. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend too long wittering on about the performance and the mechanism in these Locos, because we've seen it all a million times. Like I say, it is just the basic standard cheap Hornby 040 chassis and I don't believe there's anything different about the steampunk version of these chassis. So let's start with the duck-lipped loco to start with. Does it work? Yep, yeah, it works absolutely fine. How's the gearing? Let's go past at 50. Yeah, so not too fast, that's good. Can they crawl? Ease it up gently. Yeah, not badly, not badly at all. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, not the best, again, these are cheap, cheap chassis, but they do work fine and they do tend to be quite long lasting. Although of course the bodies do add a little bit more weight in this case, let's cut out. Um, so I guess the lack of bearings is slightly more concerning here because there's a lot of weight on them, but still no big deal. Right, hideous jet powered diesel thing. Let's have a go at this. Does this one work? Yeah, it does. No, it's cut out immediately. Not been running, of course. Uh, probably will just let these run, to be fair. I'm not too bothered about running them in properly. Um, yeah, it keeps uh, struggling on the points. This is obviously a big, heavy one, so does this one crawl? Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's very jerky, but there's no flywheel or anything in these, so that's to be expected. So, Let's talk about rolling stock. I only, I think I only have one piece of rolling stock and this is it. It's the standard Hornby coach, which has had random pipes that aren't connected to anything stuck all over it. And then the whole thing has been cast in resin. 
a quick glance and it looks cool, but under closer scrutiny, it just has no substance because there's no logic to it. Again though, nice and heavy rolling stock. Before we couple up the rolling stock to this stuff, let's have a quick look at the mechanisms. I'm not going to go into any kind of detail here, but I will at least try to remove the bodies and show you what's inside. Let's get the body off this horrid thing then, and this could be an important thing to do because, you know, if these things are not selling, they might go really, really cheap one day, and then you can buy these models for the chassis. So anyway, screw out the back, and then hopefully I should be able to prise this out. It does say in the instructions that you're supposed to lever it out, so let's try that. Yep. So there you go. Just the standard Hornby chassis, which is made of plastic. There's no proper bearings on the axles, no DCC socket, three pole motor, worm drive directly to the axle. That's all the mechanism is. Let's have a look at um, the other thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I should undo the screw. Um, not entirely sure if I need to with this, but I'm going to. And then I should be able to just prise the body off in a similar sort of way. Not being too careful, of course. Okay, there you go. So yeah, the body is actually glued to this die cast running plate piece. So there's no way of getting that off uh, unless you break the glue. So that must be what happened when I was servicing that before. And uh, yeah, underneath, as you can see, exactly the same thing. Very cheap plasticky chassis, weighs almost nothing. No features on it to speak of. Right, let's send them running around the track. So while these run along, let's try and answer the title question of this video, that is what went wrong with the Hornby Steampunk range. And clearly the answer is quite a lot of things went wrong. The first thing I would say is a fundamental misunderstanding of what Steampunk is and should be. Taking mundane existing objects, sticking gears, pipes and other bits of tat onto them and then selling them as steampunk products is the opposite of what steampunk enthusiasts are looking for. And this is obvious, just a few minutes of research could lead anybody to that conclusion. Why it didn't lead Hornby to that conclusion before they invested in this range is a massive mystery. Speaking investment, another thing that went wrong was lack of proper investment in the range. They took the most basic, cheapest models they had and just repurposed them. They didn't spend any serious money on this range, and yet clearly they expected to make a lot of money from it. Obviously, they overestimated demand because we're almost three years in now. They're having massive sales where the prices are cut in half, and we're coming out the other end of these sales with the products still in stock, and now they've been put back up to full price. Finally, I just don't think people want this stuff. I think if you're interested in steampunk and you want to create a steampunk layout, all you're really looking for is ideas. You don't want to be buying this stuff off the shelf. You want the joy of making it yourself. You want the unique experience of having something that nobody else has got. To just buy steampunk loco, accessories, rolling stock and just put it all together doesn't sound like a lot of fun. You really want that creativity. There are some good aspects of the range, which I think I should talk about. First of all, it is quite interesting, you know. It does catch the eye when I first saw this stuff. I did look through it and I thought, wow, this is unusual. Also, this stuff serves as a good point of inspiration. I don't recommend buying any of it, but you can certainly look at the product listings and get some inspiration for your own creations. And then you could just as easily do what Hornby have done and take some old models that nobody wants, no use for them, and you can convert them into something different, whether that be steampunk or some other sort of sci-fi space age. There's all sorts of other things that you could do with them, including steampunk, if that's what you want to do. So with that, a little bit of a pointless range. I don't mind them too much. They're quite fun to run, and if people enjoy seeing them, I'll certainly run them in videos and such. But apart from that, the whole thing irritates me because at the end of the day, this range has taken Hornby's money, time, and personnel away from their proper models. There are models in Hornby's main range that have been announced for years and they still haven't seen the light of day, yet stuff like this pops up, wastes everybody's time, and it just means that we don't get to see those proper models that you know people actually want to buy. So that's one of the major downsides of this as well. Anyway, just for some fun, let's do some ratings. So level of detail, having now bought two more of these locos, making the total number up to three, 
I've really noticed how monotonous they are. They're all the same thing. They're just an old Hornby body with some stuff stuck to it, then cast in resin, mass produced, and then painted in exactly the same way. It's unbelievable. They've all got exactly the same paint job. And because they're all casted in resin, there's no separately fitted parts really on these. They're just blob bodies. So two star. The performance though is absolutely fine. They're not great crawlers or anything, but they're nice and smooth, quiet, reliable. You know, this is a basic chassis, but it does work well, so I've given it four star. The pulling power, pretty good as well. 0.2 newtons for the diesel, 0.18 for the slightly lighter steamer, around 15 coaches on straight and level track. Thanks to the heavy resin body, these are better pullers than the regular plastic locos. The mechanism though is a two star, no proper bearings on the axles, very tricky to maintain and access the pickups, cheap three pole motor, no flywheel and no DCC socket. Clearly no lighting or anything like that either, so very basic mechanism. Quality I've given three star because the paintwork is particularly slapdash, they are quite plasticky in their construction or resiny I guess and the quality of the chassis is relatively poor as well. It's just a plastic thing, cheap motor, that kind of thing. Not terribly put together though. Yeah, they, they are presented reasonably nicely, I suppose. So I've given it a middle of the road three star. Value for money then. When these first came out, the Locos were £39.99. And although I managed to pick these up in the sale much more cheaply, overall the price has only increased since then with the new RRP being £43.99. For me, they are not worth the money. Almost £45 for one of these? Oh, I don't think so. And it would seem most people agree with that. Price I paid £22. Yeah, it's a bit more worth it because you can pick them up, use them as spares, that kind of thing. Or just to uh, poke a bit of fun at. In fact, they are quite good for that. Anyway, overall 6.03 out of 10. Not very impressive. That's a grade of E. Into the logbook we go, just below the Helgen Class 45 and above the A2-3. Unfortunately, a little bit of a waste of time. But there you have it, that is Hornby's Steampunk range. Not dreadfully impressed by it. Obviously, these products are not aimed at me. And obviously, if you think better of them than I do, if you like them, that's absolutely fine. I can only give you my opinion, and my opinion of them is that they're a bit of a waste of time. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. Please comment down below, in fact, and let me know. I'll pop some affiliate links in the description if I can find one for this stuff. That's not to say I recommend it, but if you want to, the links are there. For now, though, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.